All right, guys, in this video, Tucker and I are going to show you how to fill the hole in this Corvette chassis with a nice custom-made fiberglass floor pan. Ain't that right, buddy? He's like, I don't know how we're going to do this. Hmm, I got a measuring tape here. Tuck, what do you think? Should we get going? Come on, let's go! In this part of the video, I'm going to go through how I planned and designed the new floor for the pictures on the Corvette chassis. Here you see, of course, the overhead view of the chassis. What we're trying to accomplish is to recess the floor pan down between the frame rails to gain some head height in the finished car, kind of get the seat down a little bit lower. What the uh, new floor... Uh, outline looks like then will be floor pans recessed down with some bracing to hold it on the chassis uh, and clearance around the uh, cross member there and try to get that seat down a little bit lower. I like to visualize it in sort of 3D so here you can see that um, these parts here are going to be flat on the frame the pans will be recessed both sides uh, in, in the footwell as well. And then um, there'll be some other more vertical or angled members here um, to in order to um, connect the pieces uh, and that would all be kind of glued up together. I'm making this out of uh, composite material I'll show a little bit later. Um, it comes in a four by eight sheet. So basically what we're doing here is we've got the, the floor pan members all roughly designed and I made cardboard templates <clears throat> in the, uh, on the chassis to kind of verify the dimensions. If you unfolded the whole floor pan, this is what it would all look like. Um, What I wanted to do is to try to conserve and maximize the use of the material as much as I could. So I laid out all those pieces on a, the four by eight sheet that it comes in um, in order to, to maximize my material. I have some other pieces uh, for the body support I want to make out of this sheet as well. So um, I'm going to have enough material with one, uh, one sheet to do all of it. And that's the general, the general approach uh, that I have right now. All right, hi guys, getting ready to start putting the floor together. I thought I'd show you what I'm using for materials. This is a big old bucket of fixotropic powder, fume silica for thickening resin, bunch of mixing cups, stern paddles, fiberglass tape for doing seams. All, the end is all seamed so it doesn't come apart. Cool little roller, fin roller for getting bubbles out of the laminate. Uh, adhesive, thickened epoxy. I'm using System 3. Uh, epoxy resin, part A, hardener part B. It's cool, you get these nice metering pumps to use to make it easy to uh, mix. It's two to one epoxy. And this is the uh, Quick Fair two part, uh, you know, um, kind of like the, the Bondo, if you will, uh, made for um, fiberglass uh, fairing. They call it fairing compound. And I'm using Kusa board. So you haven't seen it before. Uh, here's what it looks like. Um, I'm using a half inch Kusa board. It's actually, I got a close up of a piece here. It's actually a um, polyurethane foam laminated with a couple of rows of woven roving and uh, reinforced with continuous filament. Um, Fiberglass, you can see some of the woven roving on the back there. Um, it's super hard and supposed to take resin very, very carefully. As uh, you may know, it's actually fairly expensive. So being very careful to make the most of what I, how I'm using my sheet. Uh, 250 bucks for a half inch sheet. But you can see I've got a layout ready to start putting together uh, the floor frame. So, well, here goes nothing.
Well, everything is stuck together. Um, you can see I've got the edges um, filleted a little bit. Uh, I've got my fiberglass, my stuff all set up here. And time to lay it up. Okay hey guys, thought I'd give you a look at the finished product. Now this is upside down, but this is the floor assembly with all of the pieces put together. I didn't film this last bit of layout because, well you've seen it all before, but it's the same idea using the 4 inch strip of fiberglass and the resin and reinforcing all of the seams. Here's the side piece that goes along the top of the frame rail. Here's the center channel that goes underneath, uh, that goes over, rather over the transmission cross member. These little sort of indentations on either side, you have to have a little bit of relief there so you can remove the transmission cross member bolt, if you so choose, unless you have a welded in one. I have a bolted in one. This little middle middle area here is the cutout for the Corvette um, emergency brake pulley. And of course the transmission uh, area goes here. You can see the rest of the seam work. Again, that white colored, um, looks like caulking underneath the fiberglass. That's the thickened epoxy that I use both to stick the pieces together and to fill it the um, the inside corners because a sharp corner like that the fiberglass will not conform to again same side on the other side here same thing we have the uh, cutouts for the transmission cross member and uh, there it is it'll you need to cure up for a couple of days uh, along each side these are the uh, openings where the body mounts go so this whole assembly flips over goes on top of that and the body mounts poke through that. I'll cut those out after and clean those up. It's just easier to glass it in this way. But uh, there it is. The next step now, uh, when this is all cured, is I have to start laying the fiberglass matting over the rest of the, uh, the broad area, like all across here, one or two layers. I think I'll do two layers. Uh, what I'm using for that is this, it's called 1708. 
um, it's cl um, cloth on one side, mat on the other. I've got a big roll of this. I put in a, a makeshift stand here. Uh, that's what I'll be using for uh, for laying up um, both uh, sides of this uh, floor pan. Um, I will test fit it before I do that, though. Um, once the snow stops uh, this week. Um, and I'll probably do a couple of pictures of that to show what it looks like on the car um, before I do all of the, uh, the full laminations. But all of the assemblies together, I think it's something like, I don't know, maybe 18 different pieces that I used. Uh, but this gives me a nice recessed floor pan. And uh, so far it looks like it's come out pretty good. All right, and here is the floor pan fit into the chassis. Uh, popped right in, first try. See, it fits pretty close around. Transmission and the cross member. All right through the back here. We have a few more pieces added in the back for um, the back panel, but I'll be putting those later after I fit the body back down. Close up there of the, how the body mounts fit in between. And here it is, really good fit. You might be asking, did I forget about this? I did not. My plan now is to fabricate a transmission tunnel, a drive shaft tunnel, and uh, be kind of a hump affair to go over the middle there, and then I'll cut out the, uh, the bottom here. Um, to allow access from below. I did that uh, on, on purpose that way in order to keep the two um, floor pans nice and flat all the way across and keep it nice and stiff, but I'll be cutting out some of the structure over here and underneath you can see it's outlined a little bit, making an opening for the parking brake handle on the Corvette. Kind of sits up here right above uh, recessed into the console, which I'll have to make. And uh, down through this pulley down here, down below. So a little bit more modifying cutting out to do there. But uh, there it is so far. And uh, move on to the next phase.